What's happening, Andy here. I am joined today by Paul Banco and Ben Manning of Etherfax. How are you guys doing today? Oh, we're doing great. Well. Good to see you. What's happening? What's happening? First, um, let's uh, let's just re revisit a little bit. We saw you, Paul, a couple of weeks ago at the CDA dealer meeting uh, conference. It was in Cincinnati. That was actually your first, um, your company's first meeting of that sort. You haven't done really any of the, the peer groups or BTA meetings before, so... Um, Welcome. That was exciting to see you guys there. Uh, tell us a little bit about Etherfax and and uh, what did you think of your your, your meeting there? Um, you know, it, it was a great meeting. Um, I, I, it was a great conference altogether. You know, it was my first time there, obviously. Um, I kind of went there last minute. Uh, two colleagues of mine were there, uh, Ken Romo and Jennifer Greco, who um, really managed that side of, uh, of our business. I thought the conference was uh, really well run, well put together. It was very intimate, which was really nice. It wasn't, you know, like this big, massive conference. Like you actually had an opportunity to really sit down and talk to people. So um, we're going to certainly, uh, you know, do it again and looking forward to the next one. And it was great to see you there as well. <laughs> yeah, it was it was great to actually meet in person finally. Um, it, it was a good couple of days. You know, we we uh, they had a security breakout session uh, or well, the first day or so was, a, was all security based with um not security so much, but uh, just managed services in general with their their MTA group, uh, and you were there for the full for the full meeting. So for for the MTA side, and then also the uh, the CDA owners part, which was which was after. So um, they did spend some time talking about security, and then you know we we um, we were talking about an article that you had posted on LinkedIn that we'll share a link uh, in the bottom of that. But it spurred some you know the the idea of maybe we should do a video. And uh, and discuss a little bit about um, some of the issues out there with data and security and uh, you know just in general breaches that are going on and and, and where things stand. So just um, maybe Ben, why don't you give us a little bit of background on on who is Etherfax? What do you guys do? Yeah, so we are uh, really what we are uh, built our the entire foundation around what we call our secure exchange network. Uh, so connecting any two agnostic endpoints across a network. Uh, getting rid of what you would call traditional facts uh, over telephony. So not two modems hissing at each other anymore. It is putting fax boards in the cloud and moving documents back and forth uh, at the speed of digital. Uh, so we really, um, you know, as Paul would like to say, if he had a crystal ball 20 years ago when he, when he started Etherfax, he would have named it something different. Um, we're so much more than fax at this point. We are a secure exchange network, a software-defined network, if you will. Uh, allowing any two endpoints to connect uh, and exchange any type of documentation and really getting in more uh, away from uh, faxing. We're creating uh, what we're calling the off-ramp from fax and the on-ramp to interoperability. Um, and in that off-ramp from fax, it's really this, uh, the idea of document exchange versus, you know, simply faxing something back and forth. So that's kind of where we are uh, in terms of uh, the company uh, and where we're going. So, I mean, Paul, how is fax still even a thing? How, you know, it's it's <laughs> it, it just won't go away. It's, every day. <laughs> it's the original, you know, way to move documents back and forth between businesses. You know, it was uh, still in its heyday when I was selling copiers, and and but how is it still a thing? Yeah, the simple answer to that is it just works, right? So if I need to get a document from A to B, especially if I need to, if security is part of that document transport. I can't just throw it into an email. Email is not secure. Secure email is really complicated to try and get through. It's, you know, the exchanging of keys and all of that information on the back end, and I have to have the key to open it. Whereas fax just works, right? It has just worked for a long time. If I have a document and I need to get it from point A to point B, we all have an identifier, uh, as we like to say, you know, you, you've got your cell phone. That is your unique identifier, your cell phone number. Right. And so a fax number is a unique identifier. I can identify who it's going to uh, in the same sense. If I'm getting a document, I can identify who it's coming from. And at the end of the day, type in 10 numbers, hit the shiny green button and it just goes and it just works. It is simple and it is easy. And, and, and also, uh, you know, with Etherfax as a backbone, it is secure all the way across. So, uh, yes, yeah, even in you know, today's day and age, this is why people are still faxing. It's easy. So how, you, how is it more secure, Paul? How is it more secure than just, let's say, scanning? You know, everyone's got scanning now. Everyone's got email, right? Um, how, how, what's the difference? Layman's terms. Yeah, you, you know, um, 
you know, it's a it's a <laughs> interesting. Like fax is still legal for so many things, whereas scanning and just emailing documents is not, right? Yeah. yeah, and email is not HIPAA compliant in the healthcare world, but faxing is HIPAA compliant. So, yes. you know, you've got that going for you as well. Right. You know, the 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 idea behind it and, you know, um, you know, I often struggle with this, you know, in terms of security, right? The transmission can't be altered, right? Or it can't be altered in transmission. Um, I mean, that's really the 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 layer of security behind the facts. And I, I would argue that in today's day and age, it needs to be better, right? It, it 100% needs, but it needs to be as simple, but it needs to be better on the security aspect side of things, um, you know, which is really where the Secure Exchange Network for Etherfax comes into play because we have control of the entire path of that document where we can completely encrypt that tunnel. And then for added levels of security, if you really want to go crazy and wild out there, we can throw some end-to-end -end encryption um, out there as well. But, um, you know, going back to why is fact still here today, I think the number one answer or the, the, the number one reason for it is it's simplicity, right? It's ubiquitous. It, it, it's, I don't have to worry about interoperability between, you know, systems, you know, is, is your system going to be able to ingest the data of, of what I'm sending you? I can walk up, put it in. It's, it's secure. And I put in my 10 digits and it goes and I get a confirmation it either went or it didn't. That's why it's still so heavily used, especially in healthcare today. Well, the compliance issues, that's got to be one of the drivers, drivers of that. And you, so you did, you wrote this, um, you wrote this article, it was targeted towards CIOs uh, and, and you talked about audits, right? And the importance mm -hmm. of audits. Could you, why don't you give us some background on that and, and, and what was, um, you know, what were some of the points that you were making about that for our listeners? Well, think about it. I mean, if you were to call a service and, and you know, and you wanted to use a, let's say, a, a, an Etherfax type solution, the very first question that you would ask them are, are you secure? Are you HIPAA compliant? Nobody's going to tell you no. No, we're not secure. No, we're not HIPAA compliant, right? Well, okay, you say you're HIPAA compliant. You say that you're secure. Here's my 1000 questionnaire Excel worksheet please go ahead and fill this out so I can see how secure you are. Okay. So, so this is what a lot of, um, this is what a lot of customers are doing today. And truth be told, all right, we could fill those things out all day. They're time consuming. And I could put anything and everything in there that you want and hand that back to you. And then you can, you know, put your little checkbox and say, well, they're secure and they're going to sign this BAA and, you know, God forbid there's a breach. They're going to, you know, they're, they're going to be financially responsible for that. That's what we're seeing time and time again. Now, for the organizations that are really, really secure and have security prioritized, right, and it's the top of their mind they're going to just not, they're not going to just take your Excel sheet of their questionnaire and they say for a word. They're going to say, okay, mm -hmm. this is great. Now, what third party audits have validated this information, right? Show me your attestations of compliance. Let me see that you were audited by a third party QSA for high trust, for PCI. Let's see that because then we know. 100% that someone else, a third party, you know, um, you know, non, uh, you know, not, uh, not biased or, or unbiased third party looked at the information you provided evidence and you are doing exactly what you say that you are doing in regards to securing data. That's where we need to be. That's exactly yeah, and I think on that point, Paul, it, uh, you've got the numbers on top of your head. I never do. Um, it, talk through the the number of controls that we have with uh, going through third party high trust attestations of compliance, uh, and then also FedRAM. Uh, the number of controls there. Yeah, so I think so those are important, right? That much more much more in depth than those security questionnaires that we get. Yeah, I'm looking for. Um, so we uh, so so PCI and FedRAM. 
oh, I'm sorry, PCI and high trust, you're around 390 plus controls. I think high trust and 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 again, I'm not exactly it's you know, you know, you know, give or take, you know, 10 or 15 controls, around 420, 430 controls in their R2 version. Um, and then you take a look at FedRAMP, which we're currently in the process of going through right now, and that's around close to 1300 controls Wow! Um, on top. So, you know, hands down, I, you know, I, I applaud high trust. Um, you know, I applaud PCI, you know, the fact that, you know, you, you did high trust four or five years ago, they just took your word for it. Right. You know, they had a lot of problems with auditors, QSA saying, Oh, they provided us evidence when they didn't provide us evidence. High trust has done a phenomenal job of weeding out the bad and bringing in the good and actually making it harder and stricter um, to get their certifications because you're having to present um, much more um, evidence to get that attestation of compliance, which is why these certifications are hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to maintain and, and you know, just to even go through. It's resource intensive, but it does show a level of commitment to who's ever looking at you and how serious you are about security and credibility. I mean, it's, you know, it's one thing when I say, yeah, yeah like you, you, you said before, but you know, when, when, you, when you're confirming your own numbers, right. And I mean, if you were going to lie about it, then you're going to lie about it. And, and nobody's ever hopefully going to find out about it. But if, if anything, you know, if there was a breach, right, everyone's going to find out about it. And then, you know, your recourse is, well, this person was dishonest and, you know, maybe what else did they lie about? So that, so it keeps everybody on the same page. And, and I, I like the idea that, you know, it, it, it validates what you guys do. Right. And so is this something, you know, that vendors are doing? Is this something you think dealers could actually go and do on their own? And do they get certified? How do they play into this process? I, I, yeah, I, I think the value of ether facts is that that we get that that uh, certifications and those attestations of compliance, uh, and then anybody who's using Etherfax's services, whether it's you know through Lexmark devices or uh, Rico document scanner devices, anybody that is on our network using our services, uh, any of the documents that are exchanged across our network, they all fall under that high trust uh, compliance. We operate in a in a high trust environment we operate in a HIPAA compliant environment mm -hmm. so the the benefit of working with a vendor like Etherfax on the back end is that you don't have to worry about getting those each individual vendor each individual dealer doesn't have to worry about those security compliances it comes along with with working with Etherfax and that's uh, you know I think a large part of the article that Paul wrote was was getting to uh, you know the CTOs and the CSOs and the end user who gets the document into an inbox and they think, well, it's there, it must have come securely. To them, security is is an afterthought at best. Uh, they just think, oh, there's a document, I'm going to use it. It's the CSOs, the CTOs that have to worry about, did that document arrive securely? Is there some data breach? Think of like a, an insurance company, a law, for, a law firm, a lot of our volume is in healthcare. One PHI data breach could shut down an entire healthcare system hundreds of hospitals in a healthcare system or, or ambulatory clinics, right? Um, and what does that do uh, in terms of their visibility, in terms of their credibility that, uh, you know, we went with the vendor that nod, nod, wink, wink. Yeah, they said that they were high trust certified, just trust us versus going with a vendor that went through this attestation of compliance. And, and yeah, this really is a certified uh, secure network. So that, that's kind of where we draw that distinction for us. Paul, you're right to that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, you know, from the dealer side of things, I mean, you know, dealers, they're on the front lines. Who's the very first one getting a phone call in the event of a security breach? Hey, Mr. Dealer, you told me this was secure. Yeah, well, that's because the vendor told us it was secure. Did you do any due diligence to make sure that they were secure? No. Or, yeah, we gave, we gave them the Excel spreadsheet and they answered it. It looked great. You know, so dealers, when they're, when they're positioning Etherfax, they know that Etherfax has spent the money. We've provided attestations of compliance and not only high trust, but in PCI 
we we provided HIPAA guidelines because HIPAA is really nothing more than a guideline. There's no third, there's no governing body that's validating whether or not you're HIPAA compliant, right? But vendors, when utilizing and pitching Etherfax, they know that we have gone through this rigorous process and that we have allocated the resources. Um, you know, we've added, allocated the financial resources, the manpower on what it takes to get these levels of, uh, of certifications. So, you know, you could talk to dealers and they'll tell you all day long, you know, we're, we, we sleep much better at night knowing that you have these certifications. Yeah, I could see that being hugely valuable, right? So, you know, I guess the advice really is that dealers need to look at who who's supplying all of their products, really, especially products that, you know, are security, um, are security minded and, you know, secure facts obviously plays into that. So, um, but you should vet them and and find out, you know, what kind of certifications they have and and who's who's provided those to them. That's That's definitely something that I wouldn't have thought about until reading that article. Right. Um, and how important is, is, is that process now as things are, you know, continue to move to the cloud, right? Especially as we get off on-prem. I, I mean, more so than ever. Um, I don't think, you know, and I'm not really on the sales side, but I do see the things that, that come across, especially in, in, you know, you know, when it relates to security, because, you know, we 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 actually like if we get these massive security questionnaires, we obviously deal size it because it takes a lot of a lot of resources. Um, I would say that if we had 50 healthcare deals a month, all right, 47 of them, the very first thing they're asking for is third party attestations of compliance. Wow. So yeah. it's, it's, that's, that's becoming a huge deal then. Huge, huge. Yeah. Because, because what do you read about every single day? Hospital breach, data breach, EPHI breach, this and that. Why? Because all we were doing was the checkbox. All we were saying was, here's, here's the questions, answer them. Nobody ever validated them. But now CISOs and CIOs and TTO, who's ever in charge of the security side of things, they're getting smarter and they're demanding and they're requiring more because we all we're, we're moving to the cloud no matter how no matter what you say no matter what you think no matter how whether you like it or not we're we're we're, we're moving there and healthcare you know I, you know agree or disagree but they're the last they were the last to embrace the cloud yeah. so but now it's it's more and more well, nobody needs security more than arguably or, or, than healthcare, right? So, um, good opportunity, good conversation. I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to come on and chat with us about this. This is really enlightening. Any any last uh, advice for for everybody as we as we wind down our time here, Paul? Why don't we start? Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, so for anyone that's out there, vendors, customers, you know, validate. Don't just take their word for it. Just because they filled it out, you know, don't use the, oh, it must be true, it's on the internet type of uh, mentality. Put your vendor through the due diligence, do the due diligence, put them through the process and require and ask and have them present you with what they're saying that they're, you know, that they're attesting to. How about you, Ben? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree any more with that, that statement that we put so much weight into uh, going through the third party attestation of compliance. Uh, and if others are not doing that, you have to question, is that a vendor that will stand behind the dealer uh, and the and the dealer knowing that then will stand behind us and they can do so comfortably knowing, you know, we've gone through all of the, the time effort and, and the money it's, as Paul mentioned, it is expensive, um, but we do it because it's important to us and we do it because it's important to the dealer. And so, I think any of the vendors, any of the dealers, any of the manufacturers out there don't, like Paul said, don't take their word for it. Ask, but also ask for that third party um, attestation of compliance as well. That really says, you know, someone else has verified that you're doing this. And that's important. Yeah. I do want to add one thing, Andy. And 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 this was, you know, we're, we're you know, a very security conscious organization right when we built etherfax from the ground up um we we took a lot of what our sister company does in in the government side of things and we put that technology 
you know, into the Etherfax um, protocol service, you know, what have you into the product line. Um, when we went through our first, um, our first high trust audit, you really get an understanding, like, cause we all thought like, Hey, we were great. We, you know, we had all our I's dotted, our T's were like, we, we knew what we were doing when it came to security, right? Like we, you, we didn't have to worry about anything. We realized just how vulnerable and the lack of policies that we had from just this one audit. And we, when we were, we were, it was shocking. And I remember um, High Trust, they, uh, you know, they score you across 19 different domains, right? And, and you're weighted. And I think you needed like back then and, and High Trust, if you're going to watch just don't quote me, you know, or don't, <laughs> don't get upset at me. But I think you needed like a passing score of 70. And um, we came out of the box and we had a passing score of 60 after we did our first assessment. And our QSA, who, by the way, is great. And I'll, I'll throw them a plug compliance point. They're, they're doing our high trust PCI and FedRAMP. They came to us and said, you know, you guys, not for nothing, you guys were the highest that, that we've scored um, out of the box. And I said, well, you know, it's interesting. What do, you know, what do hospitals score? They're like on average, like a 30. And I'm oh. like, Wait, <laughs> let, me just, let yeah. me just understand this. My health now, you know, you go and you sign your HIPAA waiver law and all of this and all of that, and nobody reads it. Right. And, and so, you know, knowing that, like, I'm going to go into a hospital knowing that there's a, the overwhelming, you know, favoritism is the fact that my data is going to get hacked in this system at what point. But what am I going to do? Refuse medical care? Yeah. Kind of in a situation, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> hey, you know, all yeah. right. You know, I'm bleeding out of my jugular. Yeah. Um, you know, I can I'll you worry about that later. Here? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it was just eye opening for organizations that think they're secure until they go through like a third party value. Well, yeah. Until somebody else looks at it, you, you know, you, you, you companies go like this and they, they don't, you know, they don't look outside off to the sides very often and they, they know what they're doing and they do it day in, day out. But all of a sudden to have somebody else come in and go through your processes and your practices and, you know, criticize and, and try to find holes, um, you know, it's probably something every company should do at some point. So this this has been awesome. Thank you guys so much for sharing this. And uh, we will catch up soon and have a great have a great weekend. Good, good seeing you guys. Likewise, Andy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.